What's up summoners? King Blair here. What makes someone evil? Is it their actions? Is it their intentions? Or is it the pleasure that they take from hurting others? Today for Top 5 Tuesday, we're going to be talking about the top 5 most evil playable characters in Epic 7. So if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and join the Discord server. Link down in the description. I do want to warn you guys that there will be story spoilers as I use it as justification to why a character may be evil in the storyline. I also do want to preface this by saying that it is all primarily based on my opinion. If you disagree with it and the definition that I have of evil, write that in the comments. Who do you think is more evil than the characters I listed and why? But without further ado, let's get right into it. So first, let's define evil because we probably have different... Um, uh, different ways of of quantifying that uh, for me personally, you know It's not just being a bad person. It's not just committing villainous acts What makes someone evil is when they actually enjoy doing these evil acts when they're harming others They're taking pleasure from it and are just sadistic manipulative and just doing some not okay stuff to people and enjoying it, right? That's the big one uh, sometimes, as we'll see with some of the honorable mentions, while they are very villainous, they're not necessarily evil. So, not with that definition out of the way, let's get to the honorable mentions. So, honorable mentions for this one is going to be Kron and Melissa, right? So, for Kron, is he a villain? Yes. Is he a good person? No. But when you see in the storyline, what he's doing was essentially his job, right? He was sent by Elroy's with the Archdemon uh, to destroy the world of Orbis and in his eyes he's like you know Orbis is in a constant state of destruction and recreation and DJ is just there and that's the whole reason he's there is to get DJ out of the world of Orbis right and he knows that Ross is lying to the people uh, he does not take pleasure in doing the villainous acts and killing others he just kind of sees it like his job right he's just like I just have to do this so while he is a pretty good villain he's not necessarily evil because while what he's doing is not okay, there is some justification to it, and it becomes kind of the moral gray. Now, the other honorable mention is going to be Melissa. She could have honestly made it into the list, but I felt like some of the other ones are a little bit uh, more understandable, right? So Melissa, if you didn't know, she was a regular person that was in love with a vampire lord. The vampire lord turned into a vampire, but before um, they could get married and everything, the vampire lord promised his heart, but... He had to seal her in a coffin to save her. Melissa didn't know this, uh, that the whole reason why he left her was because he had to give up his vampire powers to save her. And he ended up marrying someone else. And she saw that and she was super upset that he, that her lover married someone else. So her whole royal life is for her to kill the, her lover's son. And who is Hayes, by the way, if you guys didn't know. And she goes to very great lengths to kill Haste. Right? And in the process, she kills a lot of people. She's kind of a vampire. Right? You know, vampires aren't necessarily good. You know, they, 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 they kind of have to kill people to survive. They have to suck their blood. Um, so she does a lot of really messed up stuff and manipulates a lot of things. But at the end, when she realizes what happened and realizes the truth, that her lover didn't actually abandon her out of choice. It was more of like he had to give up his immortality essentially to save her. Right? So it was very, very sad at the end. And she kind of understood and was put back in the coffin. Um, and all that rage after centuries, it can well up inside of you. So she was more taking revenge rather than evil and enjoying the process. She just wanted revenge, right? But now let's get to number five. So this one, again, it could have easily been switched with Melissa. But it is going to be her Vaughn. So if you guys don't know who her Vaughn is, he is going to be the brother of Sneel, half brother, right? Sneel being the rightful heir to the throne. Her Vaughn um, was married out like one of like the like was not out of the marriage right so he's a half brother Ervalin is still the son of the king and his mother was highly shunned by everyone in the castle because she wasn't the queen right it was just some some random lady and the mom was not really great with Ervalin she pushed them very very far and and was kind of hurting him and Sneel, his brother, his bro, wanted to take care of him. And he called out the mom. The mo they took him away, kind of like child protection services. They took away Orvalin. And they took the mom, put her somewhere else where she eventually died. 
Irvalin never forgave Schneel for essentially killing his mother, kind of having a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome and being very vengeful. Now, the party becomes evil is not because he's looking to take revenge, it's because he could have easily taken revenge against Neil. He had several times to kill him, had several times to take his throne, but he doesn't want to do just that. He wants to make sure that Schneel suffers. He wants to make it as hard as possible for Schneel. He wants to take his wife, wants to take the throne, and ultimately take his life. Right, so he wants everything from Schneel and is enjoying the process and it's like, I'm going to revel in revenge. So, definitely not a good guy, right? Definitely not someone great. Um, right now, the story is still unfolding. We'll get to see someone of his psyche. The reason he links so low is because, again, revenge as a motivation. While it's still wrong to, to take revenge and he could have done a lot of different things and just gotten his revenge and gotten out of it, there are some more evil beings in this story. So now we are getting to number four, this one being Pearl Horizon. Now the character description is going to be a little outdated. Uh, it does say she kind of uh, kills her opponents uh, with a gentle and friendly face. We actually find out that Pearl Horizon is actually the daughter of a rich person whose wife died of a sickness and all of his daughters had this sickness. He wanted to save them and eventually carried out a ritual to try to save them. All the Banshee sisters thought that her their father was trying to kill them and abandon them because he was afraid of them, but they found out later on that he was just trying to protect them. There are kind of not so great girls because of all the evil magic and stuff and being so alone for so long in the mansion that her father used to own. Uh, eventually when they are released, they go out into the world and Pearl Horizon is not great right now. Not only is she a Banshee, uh, she also thinks humans are dolls and playthings that she can make their dolls and fill up her home with dolls, right? So when, whenever in her specialty change, you realize um, as she's going that her biggest thing is going to be that she wants to collect dolls, but these dolls are actually mainly just dead humans, right? So it's not, it's not good, you know, collecting dead humans is not okay and enjoying it and calling them dolls, that's not okay. Um, you know, over time though, she's kind of turning a new leaf. She's turning herself to homunculus research, which is not good still, but still very, 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 very evil. You know, just making people her dolls, like essentially killing them, making her dolls. It's not good, right? That's, that's pretty evil and enjoying it. She enjoys essentially killing people. She's a monster by all definitions of the world. But all right, now let's move on to the number three, which is going to be sinful angelica oh man this this person is something else very mysterious still and we have not seen a lot of it so what happens essentially sinful angelica is the counterpart to angelica where angelica was an orphan girl who the a goddess took care of her and essentially combined with angelica on the other side sinful angelica is the other part who was a bratty kid, essentially, who was deadly sick. So, you know, that that's not great. Um, but also became uh, tied with a goddess, right? Or a mysterious being, right? So she really hates everyone. She thinks the world betrayed her. She's sick. And she's like, I want to destroy everything. And is mixed with a pretty evil being. Her only appearance that we saw, her goal was essentially to kill everything and the church of the goddess and everything when she appeared in the storyline in the unknown island over the summer story she comes in with a purple mist that's spreading over the island she doesn't care for the sanctity of life she doesn't care how many people she kills and she wants to be fully regained with angelica and become the powerful being that they once were and take their revenge the lack of empathy for the sanctity of life and just wanting to just destroy everything out of their hatred even though it wasn't directly caused upon them, is something that is not going to be good. So Sinful Angelica, kind of an evil demonic being, essentially. Uh, kind of wants to just destroy everything, pretty messed up, right? So not not great. Not, we're, we're looking at a lot of monsters here. Now on to the number two. We have Mort. And you guys may be wondering, Mortal X? Really? So, spoiler warning, I actually hate this guy. Uh, this guy is very, very weird and just very, very messed up. The only thing he cares about is a challenge. 
he will not think twice about killing someone just for the fun of it. Whereas all the other ones on this list are misguided, messed up, you know, evil beings, like their nature's just being villainous, like Sinful Angelica and Pearl. They're just evil, right? They're, they're literally just like monsters. He literally knowingly kills others for his own gain. But what makes him evil is that he goes as far as his only friend, who is at this point Alencia, wants to essentially curse her and make her die just so he can get a good fight. That's messed up, right? So not only are you like completely ignoring the sanctity of life, you're killing with no regard, uh, killing humans, killing dragons, doing whatever you want. You also betray your own friend and you just want to get a good fight out of him. That's the only thing you care about. He is extremely selfish, extremely evil, and doesn't care about other people. Not a good guy, right? Not a good guy at all. And now on to the number three, uh, number one, sorry. This one is easily the worst one out of all of them. Not only is she a monster, she's evil, and she takes so much pleasure. She is the definition of evil. Tenebria. Doesn't matter which one, whether it's Spectre Tenebria, whether it's regular Tenebria, or whether it is Fairy Tale Tenebria, all variations of Tenebria are extremely evil. You may argue that she didn't become evil and she didn't know. In Tenebria's backstory, we find that she is basically a rich girl who likes playing pranks on people. And there's this stone that she finds that shows her fun things where what you see as the acolyte Tenebria doing all these messed up things, to her, it's just a fantasy. But that backstory aside, what does Tenebria do? Essentially, she kills, she manipulates other, all for fun. The amount of messed up things Tenebria has done, the list is just extremely long. She makes people have hallucinations and kill each other because she thinks it would be fun. She has made, um, who was it? Sorry, I just blanked out there for a second. She met for Ravi, killed her family, basically killed Ravi and turned Ravi into a homunculus all just because she thought it'd be fun. She carries out the acolytes orders and all these things, not because she's trying to follow orders, not because it's her job, but because she thinks it would be fun to watch people suffer. That is like, she literally plays things as play dolls and by all, uh, all of them, even fairy tale Tenebria, she's like, oh, it's, you know, it's for fun. Ha ha, ha ha, they killed each other. Ha ha, that's funny. That That's literally her. That's messed up. That's not okay, and that is essentially number one most evil character, Tenebria. I, I, I don't know who will be more evil than her. She's literally just like doing all these things just for fun. But that is all I have for you guys today. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with any. But that is all I got, and I will see y'all next time. Peace.